Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Yang's Business School 101. When a company decides to expand its business to a foreign country, there is a wide variety of entry strategies to choose from, and they all have their pros and cons. Often used strategies are exporting, licensing, franchising, strategic alliance, joint venture, and wholly owned subsidiary. So how to choose an appropriate entry strategy? For managers, one of the most practical approaches to help them at least exclude some options is by using the OLI framework, also known as the eclectic paradigm. OLI is an acronym for Ownership Location and Internalization Advantage. It is based on internalization theory and was first expounded upon in 1979 by the British economist, John H. Dunning. According to this paradigm, a company needs all three advantages to be able to successfully engage in foreign direct investment. If one or more of these advantages are not present, the focal company might want to use a different entry strategy. In this video, I will introduce each of the three advantages and provide a real-world example for you. Section 1. Ownership Advantage. First, a company needs an ownership advantage to overcome the liability of foreignness. The liability of foreignness is the inherent disadvantage that foreign firms experience in host countries because of their non-native status. These disadvantages vary from simply not speaking the local language to having limited knowledge on the local customer demands. Ownership advantages include proprietary information and various ownership rights of a company. Brand, copyright, trademark, or patent rights, and the use and skills internally available are factors that offer a company this advantage. Hence, ownership advantages are typically considered intangible. These advantages should be valuable, rare, hard to imitate, and organizationally embedded. In other words, the resource should be so valuable that a company can derive a competitive advantage over foreign rivals. Therefore, the first question that management should ask itself is, does our firm have a certain competitive advantage that can be transferred abroad to offset our liability of foreignness? This could be a strong brand name with a great reputation, unique technological capabilities, or huge economies of scale. Obviously, the answer to this question should be yes, in order to explain your motives for expanding abroad in the first place. Section 2. Location Advantage Considering the liability of foreignness, host countries must offer compelling advantages to make internationalization worthwhile to undertake foreign direct investment. These advantages can be simply geographical or exist because of the cheap raw materials, low wages, skilled labor force, special taxes, lack of tariffs, etc. Companies should assess whether there is a comparative advantage to performing specific functions within a particular nation. Often, these considerations depend on resources costs and availability. Furthermore, the attributes vary among the chosen locations. Usually, location advantage refers to natural or manufactured resources. These resources are generally immobile and require a partnership with a foreign investor in the target location to utilize them to their fullest potential. Porter's diamond model could be a great tool to determine these location advantages. Therefore, the second question that management should ask itself is, are any of these location advantages present in the market we are thinking of entering? If the answer is no, it might be wiser for management to keep production within the home country and export products instead. However, if the answer is yes, it might be better to perform certain value chain activities abroad either through licensing, franchising, or foreign direct investment. Section 3. Internalization Advantage. Finally, internalization advantages signal whether an organization should produce a particular product by itself or contract with a third party. Therefore, the third question that management should ask itself is, is it more attractive to perform the value chain activity in-house than to have it performed by an external party? If the answer is no, then management might want to license its product design to an independent foreign company or outsource production to an original equipment manufacturer, OEM. Reasons to outsource certain activities to different companies abroad might be because they are better at it, can do it cheaper, have more local market knowledge, or because management simply wants to focus on other activities in the value chain such as marketing or design. However, if the answer is yes, the firm should keep control over its activities and engage in foreign direct investment. This could be done through forming joint ventures with local partners, acquiring existing local companies, or establishing a wholly owned subsidiary. Please keep in mind that if a company decides to outsource production, it may require negotiating partnerships with local suppliers. 
However, taking an outsourcing route only makes financial sense if the contracting company can comply with the company's policies, standards, and quality requirements at a significantly lower cost. After answering these three questions with the aid of the OLI paradigm, companies should be able to at least exclude some entry strategies. When all questions have been answered with yes, it should be a good option for companies to engage in foreign direct investment and stay in control over the activities themselves. Section 4. Example. Tesla in Shanghai. Tesla Giga Shanghai is a factory in Shanghai, China, wholly owned by Tesla Incorporated. It is Tesla's first factory outside the U.S. In 2021, Tesla produced 484,130 cars from its Shanghai factory. Let's use the OLI model to understand why Elon Musk wants to build its first foreign factory in China. First, Tesla's ownership advantage. Tesla's brand image is one of its core sources of competitive advantage. It is also one of the main differentiators for the brand that sets it apart from the world's crowd of automobile brands. While several auto brands are there in the industry, including those making electric vehicles and hybrids, Tesla has acquired a very distinct image. Tesla's sustainable business model and its focus on innovation have helped it acquire the image of a transformation leader in the world of mobility. Second, Shanghai's location advantage. China is the world's largest market for electric vehicles and Tesla's second largest market after the US. Having a plant in China can help Tesla lower shipping costs and make sourcing components more cost-effective, while allowing Tesla to avoid China's import duties on US-made cars amidst mounting trade tensions between the two countries. Third, Tesla Shanghai's internalization advantage. As mentioned earlier, Tesla's major competitive advantages come from its unique technology, management system, and brand image. If Tesla chooses to license or form a joint venture with a local auto company in China, it increased the risk of losing its intellectual property to other companies. By internalizing all manufacturing activities and business records, Tesla can fully control its production process and better protect its core competitive advantages. That's why Tesla and most other auto companies tend to prefer wholly owned subsidiaries as their entry strategies. Section 5. Conclusion. The OLI framework, or the eclectic paradigm, is a three-tiered evaluation framework that companies can follow when attempting to determine if it is beneficial to pursue foreign direct investment. According to this paradigm, a company needs all three advantages to be able to successfully engage in foreign direct investment. If one or more of these advantages are not present, the focal company might want to use a different entry mode strategy. So, what do you think about the OLI model? Can you apply it to the real business world? Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.